we often get asked the question, what's the difference between a provocation and an invitation to learning? Hi, I'm Stephanie, just one half of the Curiosity Approach, and welcome to our YouTube channel. So, what is the difference between a provocation and an invitation to learning? You might often hear this um, in early childhood education. And do we really need to get hung up on the difference between the two because there's a real big overlap. A provocation is provoked from the interest of a child, provoked to spark more investigation, more curiosity, more intrigue, to develop and understand more, to build on previous learning and previous experiences. So it's to provoke more thinking, provoke more investigation and to build on what a child already knows. So it's really important we observe children, see what they're doing, understand their schematic learning styles. And if you don't understand what schematic learning styles are, those urges, that's okay. Come back to our channel another time and we'll share that one too. So to see what children are doing and then to provide a powerful, rich learning space, a continuous provision full of loose parts, open-ended resources, so children can continue. Repetition, repetition is important. So to recap, a provocation is provoked from the interest of a child, their learning styles, what they were previously doing. An invitation to learning is exactly that. It's a subliminal invite to come and explore and investigate here. This may be set up by the early years educator because we want to promote, provoke thinking. Perhaps it's something just, just something tiny. It may be the way you set up um, your home corner, how you offer some intelligent resources, open-ended resources, authentic materials, how you respect the environment to draw a child in. It may be just as simple as putting some spoons with some dishes and that invite to, for a child to come and play here. It may be a little trinket or something placed in a specific place under a table, under a chair. So when a child is playing on the floor, they notice it, it catches their eye. It's an invite to come and explore and come and play here. Now, how do these cross over? Well, a provocation, you can't set up, you know, 30 odd provocations for each individual child. But what you do set up with care and attention and it's not about overpowering the environment, less is more. What you set up as a provocation for one child will actually be an invite for another child. Inviting them in, inviting that child to come and explore and play here. So they cross over. A provocation for one child can be an invite for another. It's about understanding our children, knowing who they are. My children will be completely different to your children in your setting. And it's important that you follow the child because every child will be learning and exploring, discovering and playing in a completely different way. So it's important that you don't just take ideas of social media because you think it looks pretty or cute. Who is it for? Why are you doing it? What is the purpose? You need to be able to articulate that and understand why you're doing it. It's not because you've seen us do it or somebody else do it on social media. If you've seen an idea, and you're inspired by that, that's great. But just park it in your library, your memory, your filing cabinet of ideas until it becomes relevant for the children that 
you serve, the children that you are within your settings. Because when you offer a provocation, it's based on their needs, their understanding, their urges, their learning style. It's not because it's cute or pretty to us. Hope that makes sense. And as I said before, come back another time and I'll help you understand a little bit about schemas and schematic learning styles, or as we like to call them, urges. So if you haven't already, click the subscribe button and see the links below to our app and to our website, www.thecuriosityapproach.com. See you soon. Bye. Thank you.